So starting off with the deck profile today, we have some Rescue Ace. So starting off with Triple of the Rescue Ace Hydrant. He is the most important Rescue Ace in the entire deck for his ability to search your other monster Rescue Aces. The fact he's level 1 makes it very very easy to, for us to sort of access him from the deck via 1 for 1. And we do play a lot of ways to get to him because he is honestly probably the most important Rescue Ace in the entire deck. Your spells and traps get bonus effects if he's on the field, and if he's on the field with another rescue ace, he cannot be targeted by card effects or attacks, so that's nice. Moving on to the second most important rescue ace, the guy that sort of makes the deck work. We got double of the rescue ace, Turbulence. I'm not playing three because he can be bricky in hand. Two is more than enough. If you don't know what he does, he banishes two rescue ace cards from the graveyard, summons himself, and then can set up to four spells and traps from your deck straight to the field, which is why I think Rescue Ace have potential in the future. All they need is better spells and traps to set, and then this deck would be really, really good. But apart from him, he's 3k, 3k, so he's quite big, and he has a second effect that if a Rescue Ace leaves the field by card effect, you get to destroy one card on the field. So that is it for the main Rescue Aces. Let me get to the other guys. We have Double of the Fire Engine. I like Fire Engine, he's sort of like the second boss monster of the deck. He summons himself whenever a Rescue Ace is normal to special to the field, which you can do very, very easily. And what he does is when your opponent special summons a monster to their field, you get to special summon a Rescue Ace that is level 4 or lower from your deck. So that is really nice. It keeps sort of the advantage in your favor. This deck has a really, really easy time getting advantage. It sort of just struggles to utilize that advantage because the cards you are going to be getting won't be that impactful. We have double of the Rescue Ace Airlifter. He is a warrior and we do play Rota, so technically we have three. He, on normal or special, adds you a spell. And then when your opponent activates a monster effect, which is going to be the common theme for all the smaller guys, you get to special summon a Rescue Ace monster from your hand. So if you have Turbulence in your hand, there's an easy way to get him out. So I like him because you can search you the field spell and then the field spell gives you the double summon effect. So it's very, very nice. I don't think you should be playing three though because you don't want to be seeing too many of him. We have Double of the Rescue Ace Impulse. This guy's sort of like the hand trap of the deck. You mostly just use him for that. On the field, you can choose one effect. So it doesn't target with the highest attack and it can't use the effects for the rest of the turn. So that's really useful. And then, if, for example, if they chain that monster, you can chain him and he specials any Rescue Ace monster that is a machine out of the deck. So that is really nice. You can activate it from the field or hand. So during your opponent's turn, you still have some sort of plays going second. To round off the Rescue Aces, we have the one Rescue Ace Monitor. On summon, he will search your, your trap. And we have the one Rescue Ace Fire Attacker. So Monitor is sort of the same as your, I forgot his name, as your Airlifter, because on summon, he will get you a, a card, basically. The thing is with the traps, they aren't that useful because you want to be setting them off the deck anyway with Turbulence. But in sticky situations, you can get it. And then if they activate Monster Effect, he is a Monster Reborn from your graveyard for any Rescue Ace. Rescue Ace Fire Attacker, similar to the to the first guy I showed you, the fire engine. He summons himself whenever a rescue ace monster is normal or special to the field. And then when your opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand, except by drawing it, you can draw two cards and discard one. So that is it for the rescue ace monsters. I'm quite happy with this ratio. I'm not sure if I'm gonna tinker with it. Maybe I experiment with two fire attacker. Maybe I experiment by cutting sort of maybe one fire engine, but I think the ratios are very, very good at the moment. For the spells that are of rescue ace, we have one alert and one rescue. That's all we need because they can be set from the deck and then you can recycle them back into the deck off the field spell. So that is sort of the reason why we're only playing one of every card in the spells and traps is because the field spell puts them back from the grave or banish pile into the deck and then turbulence will set them to your field. And yeah, I just think they're really good. This help a lot with link climbing. Alert basically grabs your rescue ace from your graveyard back to your hand. Or if you control hydrant, it's a rotor and Rescue Special summons a Rescue Ace out of your graveyard, or if you control Hydrant, you can take your opponent's monsters from the graveyard as well. And this is really good because it doesn't negate their effects and they still can attack. So you can take opponent's Barons, opponent's Fenrir's, anything that is of, of value to you, you can just take it with the Rescue. And Rescue Ace HQ, I believe is a one of, I've seen a lot of people play three. I just think the one is fine because you can search it with the Airlifter anyway. And what you do is, 
during your main phase, you have two normal summons. It gives an attack and defense boost of 500, which comes up because your turbulence is 3k. And 3.5 is a lot harder to get open than 3k. And then you can also target four of your banished rescue ace cards. And these always count as rescue ace cards, which is very nice. I don't know why they just put didn't put it in the name. They were trying to be cool. Um, and it shuffles them back into the deck and draw a card. So this is your way to sort of constantly have cards to set and sort of take control in the grind game. That is it for the spells of Rescue Ace. Let's get to the traps. We have one Extinguish and we have one Contain. And basically this is a one, I believe that the Contain is like an Imperm and the Extinguish is basically just a generic pop. But if you have the Hydrant on the field, you get the bonus effects. So when you pop it, your opponent want, your opponent can activate monsters of the same original name that turn, which is good. And contain they can't be, it became, basically becomes a no material as well as the imperm, which is nice. But again, we only need one of each. You're playing a Gizmic package. I'm supposed to be playing two of the Gizmic Naganaki, I believe his name is, but I only have one at the moment. So I'm actually just testing out a Gizmic Orochi, and he's actually been all right in testing. And the good thing about Gizmic Naganaki is that when you do the small world line, which we are playing small world, if this card is in your graveyard, you can banish it and you can get one of your small world targets if it's a machine, because all of them share the same attack and defense back to your hand. So small world basically just doesn't become a neg anymore, which is nice. And obviously you can normal summon this, tribute it and get your hydrant straight out of the deck, which is cool. And Gizme Karuchi, I know it's bad into cash tiers, but it's sort of, if you're not going against cash tiers, it gives you a lot of grind in the game and it keeps banishing cards to come back as a free body, which helps you with the link climb. And the fact that it's dark helps you make dark as well. And it also is removal, because if you play the Nib, which I am playing Nib, you can kind of struggle to get rid of that massive token when you Nib your opponent. And the Gizmek is a sort of a way to get rid of that by sending three cards from your extra deck. And then you can destroy it. So that is why I'm playing the Gizmek for now. Most likely it will just become a second Naganaki though. For the Hand Traps, I did mention him. We're playing double Nib. He is very, very good this meta. Very, very good against Cash Tira. Why am I not playing three? Because I don't want to be saying too many nibs. Unlike Ash Blossom, which I'm playing three, nib sort of requires the five summons, so I don't really want to be playing three. But if you nib your opponent, you're in a very, very good spot, to be honest with you. I think nib is just really, really nice. We have triple Ash Blossom. I sort of mentioned it before as well. Fire. So it's now you can small world search this because it's a fire, which is nice. You can use it as a bridge to get. I don't know what you'd want to get, but you get, you can get it off Small World, and I'm pretty sure you can be a bridge too, which is nice. And yeah, it's just Ash Blossom. It's really good against Branded, which seems to be like one of, if not the best deck of the format. And you hit the Branded Fusions, and then they cry. So that's nice. We also have the Triple Imperm, and that is it for the hand traps we're playing. I don't want to be playing too many. We're playing eight. Rescue Ace, even though we are playing a lot of consistency cards, can struggle a little, a little bit from consistency issues. So I think playing eight hand traps is more than reasonable because any more we're gonna be just drawing hand traps and not seeing our engine. For the spells, here is where we try and make it as consistent as possible. So we got triple, pot of prosperity. What can I say? This card just got bought out again. I think it's around 65 pounds a copy now, even for the reprinted version, which I think is crazy, but it is what it is. You can sort of dig six into, into your deck, put into your deck, hope you see Hydrant or any other extenders if you have Hydrant and that sort of lets you make your plays. So triple prosperity. The only thing I'd say that it conflicts with is the field spell, but you're never going to be using your field spell turn one anyway to get the draw. So triple small world. Again, we're just trying to max out on the consistency here. You can do a bunch of bridges. The Gizmic Naganaki is a good bridge because it lets you get your Hydrant because the only thing it shares is it's machine attribute you can go nib into gizmic naganaki into your hydrant or you can go gizmic naganaki into nib into into your turbulence or something like that you can always there's a lot of bridges you can do i can't remember exactly off the top of my head but it is very useful as a combo as a sort of combo piece and extender so that's why and with the gizmic naganaki as i mentioned you can always add the face down banish machine if you if that's what you do reveal we have double of the per Perry Perry Reese map, I believe is how you say it. Basically just searches your hydrant and it won't negate the effect because you just normal summon it and then you'll get the monster search. So I like Perry's map. I'm not playing three because you don't want to be opening double small world with double Perry's map because that's a lot of ways to get into your hydrant and not a lot of extenders. So 
that is why. Now we're playing a bunch of powerful one-off spells. So we've got the one called by. Ash is the only thing that can hurt you if you have a Hydrant plus another Rescue Ace because they can't Veiler you and they can't Imperm you because it can't be targeted. So Ash you've got to be careful of. So that's why we're playing the call by and the Crossout package. Crossout also lets us hit Imperms as well. If they do manage to hit our Turbulence, it's sort of really, really bad because we were relying on that. It's sort of, if they hit Turbulence, the only thing you're left with is an IP for a Unicorn Spin. That is your only disruption, which isn't great. We have the one Rota, as mentioned before. Some of them are warriors, which lets us search, and we are playing the one for one, which you know is also very good because it gives us another copy of Hydrant. So that is it for the main deck. It is 40 cards, and now we'll be going on to the extra deck. So continuing on to the extra deck, we're gonna start off with the one Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Yes, you do make this quite often because you do manage to get a lot of bodies onto the field, and your opponent never expects it, so it's very, very funny. We have one of Access Code Talker. Again, you make this quite a lot, and this is sort of your main OTK button going second. We have our one Appalooza, which is very useful, especially since we are playing a decent amount of the Charmers, and we can sort of link climb into our Appalooza. And we're playing the one World Sea Dragon, Zealantis. So that is it for our main uh, Link 5 and Link 4 Link monsters. Let's get on to the lower ones. We've got our one. Nightmare Unicorn, of course, accompanied with our IP Mascarena. Very good package. Our normal, the normal rescue ace combo involves you always ending with IP Mascarena, so I'm tempted to sort of play two. But for now, one is being fine. And of course, you go into the Unicorn, which is your spin back. We have the one Nightmare Phoenix. Again, it's fire. Don't think that matters, to be honest with you. I just like mentioning it because the entire deck is fire. We have one Dark, the Dark Trauma Gloomy. How do you make this? Well, we play a Link 1 that we make off our Hydrant, which is Dark, and then lets us make our Dark, the Dark Trauma. We have one Heater. If they Ash you, you can sort of keep extending. We are playing the one Relinquished Anima, which is how we're going to be turning our Hydrant into a Dark, and also taking a monster if our opponent doesn't respect the zones. Shout out to Dan. We got the one. Lingaribo. This is if they play the Ibli package. You always have the one Lingaribo. I know you should be playing two, but I guess if they're going to be sort of dedicating a spot to snipe your Lingaribo, that's fine because you play a lot of monsters that can just sort of trip you over the Ibli anyway. We play the one Divine Arsenal AA Zeus because we play the one Baguska, which is the only Xyz we actually bother playing because Baguska is just great. And then for our Super Poly targets, which we play in the side, we have the one Garura with the one Mod Dragon of the Swamps. And of course, make sure you have a token for when you nib your opponent. You can give them the token and watch them cry. It's time to 